Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Jamie Lee, if you are new. Today, I wanted to talk through five purchases that I've made in the last year, which I kind of regret. And this is definitely gonna be more of a lighthearted video. I mean, obviously there's nothing actually wrong with these items. I absolutely love them, but they really just don't speak to me in the way that I thought that they did when I purchased them. And there's a few reasons why these items haven't really worked out for me. And I'm gonna talk about them in detail as I go through each one. I'm also gonna delve a little bit into how my fantasy self has driven these purchases, which is, I would say, probably where the majority of my mistakes have actually happened and I'm sure that I'm not alone in this. I think especially this past year or, you know, getting close to year and a half has just been really different and has not played out the way that any of us expected. So I'm going to just dive into it and start with the first piece. So the first purchase that I regret making are these polka dotted shorts from Australian label Age. I bought these in sort of around spring summertime because I found that the shorts that I had in my wardrobe just weren't really doing it for me. I didn't feel comfortable in them. I didn't feel confident in them. And I think whenever you're wearing an outfit, you know, you don't want to feel like you're having to fuss at things, like things are too tight. And especially with the whole lifestyle change and also just spending a lot more time at home, I've noticed that comfort is really king for me. So while I still want to look pulled together, I also want to be comfortable. And I noticed that my preference for shorts was high-waisted with sort of a loose fit through the leg and something that was slightly longer. So on paper, these tick all those boxes. They have the high-waisted fit, they've got the belt at the waist, which I actually find very flattering. And then they have this slightly A-line sort of a silhouette through the leg. They've got pockets on the hips, which are fantastic. And then also on the belt, which I really love, it's sort of this D-ring shaped belt. Uh, you do have the gold buckle, which is really cool. And it's a kind of a, a signature for the brand. However, in reality, I haven't really found myself reaching for them. I actually, so, <laughs> so this is one of the funny things about me. I can be incredibly patient when it comes to looking for items and spend seven years looking for one piece. But then I also have this other side of me, which is incredibly impatient. So when I felt like I didn't have any shorts I felt comfortable in, I went on a mad hunt to find some pairs which I did like, and I ended up with quite a few. And these were probably my least favorite out of the bunch. And I'm not sure if it's down to the polka dot print, which one thing I've picked up on in the last sort of 12 months is that I'm not really wearing spots as much as I used to. It is still one of my favorite prints and I think it is a classic. However, I'm finding as my style evolves, they feel less and less like me. So I'm not sure if that's one element of it, if it's the fact that they have a zip up closure at the back, which I just find a little bit fussy with the belt as well. So you've got to undo the belt, then you've got to undo the zip at the back and it's just a lot. And also I actually just find them a little bit challenging to wear as well. And I, I don't really know why because they're white and black. So you would think they'd be easy to wear, but for that reason, they've just not really worked out for me. And so these are ones that I'm gonna sell and I will be selling, I think, most of these items, I'm gonna put them on my Depop because when I did a poll, most of you said that Depop was where you preferred to shop. I think just because I can ship internationally, but they're an absolutely beautiful short. And I think perhaps maybe I could have dealt with the fussiness of them. They were just a plain black or a plain kind of tan color, which these would be great in sort of a beigey tan color, I think. But yeah, sadly, they've just not worked out for me, which is a shame because age is sort of more of a mid-tier to premium price point. Next item I want to talk about is a dress and when I shared this in a video, gosh it was back in February, you all loved it and I get it, I love the silhouette of it. This is from Glassens and it's just a simple, um, I think it's a cotton linen or maybe it's 100% linen dress in a gingham print. Now I've talked about gingham in the past and how I actually find that as much as I love the gingham print, I don't love it on me. It's a classic print. It's one that's gonna come out every single spring, summer. Uh, sometimes you see it in the winter time, but usually it's a buffalo check, something that's a little bit chunkier. And every single time I'm always drawn to it and it always ends up being those checked gingham pieces that I end up parting with at some point. I just don't feel me. Uh, and I feel like maybe I was kind of delving into my fantasy life as well with the style of this because it is sort of very loose around the bodice. It has this low cut back. And as much as I like that, I've also got a toddler who likes to pull on straps. So 
I need to be able to wear items that are either very secure around the bust uh, or that I can wear a bra with. And this one, because of the low scoop back, and I'll show you in cutaways, it's not really possible to do so. Uh, but it's just a really, really beautiful style. And I think the reason why I took a gamble on this, despite knowing that gingham doesn't really work for me, is because I have a gingham check skirt in my wardrobe, which I actually adore. It's got a little ruffle on it. It's actually just from H&M. And I really, really, really love that skirt. I love wearing it. I like wearing it with other neutrals. Uh, I just think it's a very easy piece to throw on. And it was those things that I kind of took into consideration when purchasing this one. So again, this is going to be one that I decide to part with from my wardrobe, just because it's I haven't actually worn it. I only wore it in that one video and uh, it's sad because it's such a beautiful option. Definitely would be a gorgeous little dress, even with a t-shirt or a long sleeve fitted white top underneath. You could throw a cardigan over the top. I mean, the styling opportunities with this are endless um, and that's one of the reasons why I like these sort of slip dresses or strappy long floaty dresses is that you can wear them multiple ways, but I need to tell myself to stop buying gingham because it's just not something that ever works for me. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about a pair of shoes, which aside from kind of wearing them around the house, I have not worn them out at all. They're these mules from Kurt Geiger. And I mean, to look at them, they're exquisite. They really are just a beautiful shoe and they're a great dupe for the Manolo Blonix, which I know a lot of kind of luxury bloggers were wearing. and. That is where I got completely sucked in. I saw so many people wearing this particular style of shoe and I felt more and more so that I needed to add them to my own shoe collection. I felt like they would be, you know, a good kind of round out piece, something that would be really special. Being nude, they go kind of with everything. Uh, really great for elongating the legs as well, something that I do tend to look for when it comes to more dressier shoes. However, when I have had the occasions to go out, which there have been a few, I've reached for my Sam Edelman Jaina Dorsey pumps because I just find that they're a lot easier to wear, they're easier to walk in because they actually have a backing on the heel uh, and they're also slightly lower too. So they're a bit more manageable for someone like me who tends to wear flats every single day or a very low block heel. Um, but I think this just sort of speaks to the fact that I was getting caught up in a fantasy life because even before having a baby, I didn't really go out that much in the evenings. Like sure, Luke and I would go out for dinner and stuff like that every now and then, but not enough for me to warrant having an additional pair of fancy shoes when I've already got so many options. Uh, I do think the embellishment on them is probably a little bit more than I would usually go for on a shoe, despite the fact that I actually adore it. And yeah, I. I I just don't know who I thought I was when I was buying them. And this is just, again, a reminder that just because you love the way that something looks on someone else, and this also goes for you if you see something you love on me, it doesn't mean that it's right for you and for your wardrobe. And I've learned my lesson with these. I'm still not sure whether I'm gonna part ways with them because they are so beautiful. I mean, this, this embellished part is like jewelry for your feet, beautiful adornment. And they are actually quite comfortable despite the fact that they are high, but I just don't really feel as confident wearing a shoe this high anymore unless it's got sort of straps around my ankle. So a little bit sad about that because obviously they're a beautiful shoe. However, it is a reminder to be more realistic about the purchases that I'm making and think about how my lifestyle will impact the frequency with which I'm able to wear them. So yeah, may or may not sell these ones, still not sure, on the fence. Maybe help me in the comment section below. Would you keep these shoes or not, knowing that you're probably actually not going to wear them? I think this next regretful purchase will probably come as a little bit of a surprise. It is this striped Merinier from Cezanne. Now I talked about this in a Cezanne review that I did towards the start of the year. And despite absolutely loving so many elements of it, I love the fact that it's got this tortoiseshell button detail down the front, the placket, uh, Henley style. I like the fact that it's kind of a beige and navy stripe, which is a classic. I love a good Breton. As you'll know, I tend to wear them quite frequently. But I've just actually not worn this once. I think I tried to wear it and I didn't like the way that my outfit looked, so I took it off and put on a different top. Which is a real shame because there's absolutely nothing wrong with this top, but I think if you watch that review video, I did mention that for one, I didn't love the fabric and fabric for me is so important when it comes to wearing something because it affects whether or not I'm going to enjoy wearing that piece and whether I'm going to 
reach for it over and over again. Uh, I'm such a tactile person, so for a fabric not to feel the way I want it to, um, and I've got very specific tastes, which, you know, everyone is different, and you've all got your own preferences, as do I. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I've not really worn it. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with the fabric. It's just a little less soft than I would expect for a 100% organic cotton. Uh, it's got a little bit of a raw, natural feel to the fabric. Uh, it doesn't feel scratchy or anything like that, but just I want it to be kind of like a Pima cotton, I suppose, where it's that very, very soft, sort of slouchy nature to the to the um, knit. And I th suppose with this, it does. I suppose with the cotton that they've used, the specific cotton, it allows the Merinia to have a bit of structure to it, which is nice. But here's the thing. I got this because I really loved that Henley detail on the Leontine sweater, which I believe is back in stock. I'm going to try and link it below if I can. I did a review on that. And funnily enough, I actually haven't worn that sweater as much as I thought I would. I still really love it and I still think it's beautiful. I'm not parting ways with it. But that was one of the precursors for why I decided to keep this because I love that sweater and I thought if I love that that much then I will love wearing this one as much too. The other thing was uh, I did purchase a number of items from Cezanne in that video and I felt really guilty about sending all of them back and I think we can probably all agree that when you're shopping online it can be a hit or miss experience. Even when you're going to the changing room at a regular store you could take 20 items in there. Okay. You could take 10 items in there with you and come out not liking anything. And that is totally normal and there's nothing wrong with that. You shouldn't go into the changing room expecting that something's going to end up looking good because uh, that's not always the case. And that has sometimes been my experience when online shopping. Sometimes I'll look at something online and think it looks amazing, that it's going to be reflective of my personal style. It arrives, I try it on and the fit is just not right for some reason or I don't like the fabric or the length is wrong or I just wish that a few details were slightly different. And so I think that guilt was what kind of also uh, encouraged me to keep at least one item from that purchase. I think I maybe kept two items from that order. I can't remember now actually, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like that was a reason why I hung on to this and Sadly, yeah, as I said, it's just gone unworn. It's brand new. So I'm going to list this one on my Depop as well. And hopefully it will go to a loving home. Um, final item that I want to talk about. It's actually not one that I'm parting ways with. And it's more just a reflection of how I wish I had reconsidered my purchase. Or maybe just considered a few little details. Because I think it would have made this particular piece a bit more wearable for me. And that purchase is this super, super duper long alpaca knit vest from Arquette. Now this is very very fluffy so it does shed a little bit. You're going to end up getting fluff on black things if you're wearing it with this so word of warning if you've had your eye on it. Now don't get me wrong I actually really like this. It's, I'm, I've got it in the size small. It is very generously cut so if you want it to be a little bit closer to your body if you like this style then I would say you could potentially size down. Uh, that wouldn't affect the way that it fits. I like the fact that despite it being sleeveless it almost kind of hugs the shoulder in a really beautiful way uh, and also it has that split detail at the hem too which I really love. Things that I wish were different about this is the length. It's basically impossible to tuck this into anything because it is essentially a dress or a tunic length. If you were petite, this would be a dress on you, 100%. You could belt it actually at the waist, it would be very cute. So it does limit the styling potential of this quite considerably. It means that when I'm wearing it, for the most part, I'm going to be wearing it worn, loose, um, because otherwise you end up just with too much bulk around your waist and it doesn't look right. Or if you were tucking it, you would maybe tuck it in partially and then you've got this big sort of fold over part at the front and yeah it's, it just makes it a little bit awkward to work with as you can probably appreciate and <laughs> annoyingly they actually have a shorter version on the website one that is probably comes to about your hip I would say just based on the photos and that one I think would probably be a little bit more wearable for me because I do tend to wear a lot of high-waisted things so I could easily tuck that in. Uh, there's also a cotton version which I think adds an interesting element of texture too. I mean this does as well being fuzzy but uh, that I think is also a nice option although I'm not sure if it's as long as this one so I will link both of those down below. But yeah I think maybe having just purchased that uh, more cropped version would have been a better um, 
a better buy or a better addition to my wardrobe just from the way that I like to wear my clothes. So from that perspective, this is a regretful purchase for me. However, it is still one that I'm enjoying wearing, but I'm just a little bit frustrated by the limitations of this item. So I hope that makes sense. But that was kind of the last one that I wanted to mention in this video. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this one. I'm getting a little bit of insight into kind of my thought process. I would love to know actually if you've made any purchases that you regret making over the last year. Let me know in the comment section below uh, and why they weren't the right purchase for you because it's really interesting, I think, kind of analyzing those thought processes behind why we were inspired by something and then also considering why it actually isn't the right fit for our closets and for us. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, for spending some of your day with me. Uh, if you are new here and you want to see more videos like this from me or just general styling videos, then I would love if you could subscribe and I will see you next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.